all right welcome back guys now in this one what we're going to do is um when the when we start playing a song right i want this um slider to move in tandem with that song or to move in sync with that song do you understand so if the song is halfway the slider should be somewhere in the middle so it should move uh every second okay you know and so that's what we're going to implement in this uh in this section okay so to do that right what we're going to do is um what we're going to do is we're going to come to uh load track just passed it okay yeah so this um function here where we um created the function to load track this is where we're going to start interacting with so remember that we created we defined this variable okay but well, we did not assign it any value okay right so we're going to this variable we're going to use it inside of this load track okay <clears throat> excuse me so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to come below this track dot load and because i want this slider to update every second right i'm going to say that my timer should be equal to set interval okay okay like i said i want it to update every second so in other words it's going to move as the song you know is playing so i'll say time i cost to set interval and here i'll call a function and the name of that function is going to be update slider <clears throat> excuse me and that function will let me add a comma here and that function will run every one thousand millisecond which is every second really okay so let me close that right but you see um initially when this load track function runs right when the load track function runs i want to first clear any interval so i'll say clear interval and i'll i'll say i'll pass in the timer uh this thing there all right so it will first clear any interval that exists right and then it will when it comes to this point here it will then do the run the set interval method to update the slider every one second now but that's not where i'm actually going to stop after it has cleared the interval i'm also going to call another function that will reset the slider so here i will say reset slider okay now the reason is that for example if maybe i am playing a song like this first song for example and for some reason i go to another the next song for some reason i go to the next song right the one of the first things i want to do when i load that track is to first of all clear the timer in other words i'll get this slider back to zero and then i'll reset the slider okay such that anytime you go to a new song it will this slider will automatically come and start from zero okay so now there are two functions we need to create the first one is to reset the slider which will set the slider back to zero and the second one is to update the slider as the song is playing so the slider will you know move every second as the song you know keeps playing so first off let's create this one to reset the slider um that's the first one we'll create so basically i'll just go down to um okay i think i'll just come down here and here i'll just say reset slider okay so for this reset slider it's actually going to be a very simple function so i'll say function and the name of the function is reset slider okay so and then basically what i'm just going to do is i'll say slider which is the variable that holds this slider dot value is equal to zero and that's all i need to do to reset the slider back to zero okay so but updating the slider as the song plays is what we'll then do in another function so i'll come here and say update slider 
okay so here i'll say function and the name of the function will be to update slider okay we've already declared um called it up at the top so it's now first off i'm going to uh create a variable i'll say let position be equal to zero okay this position is referring to the slider position okay good let me just scroll down a bit so now i would open an if statement like this and here i would say uh let me just do it like this uh first i would open let me open a bracket and say track dot duration okay track dot duration simply means how long is the track right now i want to make sure that this track dot duration is a number okay so if i say is none this actually means that if it is not a number right so if i want to check and make sure that it's a number i would add an exclamation mark here so this is the not um uh this will just actually flip this is none right all right so now i will then come here and see position is equal to so i'll say track dot current time and i'll multiply it by so let's open a bracket and then i'll say 100 divided by track dot duration okay then i will then say slider dot value will now be equal to this position i just created okay all right so what this will do is that um this is the function we are calling every one second right and what this will do is that every time as the song plays right the song is counting per second right the, it will make this slider dot position uh, this slider to move with the song because it's calling it every um, second okay that's what this will basically do okay so if i go ahead and save this right and i come here to play this song So watch, you see it moves. So you see, it's moving. Okay, so you see that it's moving. Okay, that's because of this um, function we just created here. Now, inside this update slider function, we're going to come here and let's add something that will monitor when. It's going to actually be an extension of this autoplay toggle, right? So here, I will say that if uh let me open a statement here so i'll say that if track dot ended in other words if this particular track has finished playing what do we want to do well um one of the things we want to do is that we're going to change this um sign this icon here we're going to change it back to play so if you play something it becomes pause right so if the track goes to the end one of the things you want to do is that you want to make this icon you want to switch it back to the play icon so here i would see and we've already done that in the pause button let me just look for it where's the pause and okay so this is the pause so play dot inner html so let me just grab it from here right and i'll just put it here so that's the first thing you want to do you want to change this icon to play back okay now let's add an if statement here and basically what we want to do now is we want to do it such that um if this autoplay is checked right if this autoplay is checked remember we did this autoplay function that when you click on this guy it changes like the background color so what we're going to do now is that we're going to say that if the track is ended right and this autoplay is checked we want to go to the next song okay all right but there are two conditions if it's on the first song well it will simply go to the second song but if it's on the last song then there's nothing to do so we're going to reset it back 
to the first song okay so let's come here and say that if autoplay right is equal to so let me give a space is equal to one right which means if autoplay is set and index track so index track plus one is less than or instead of saying plus one i can say if index track is less than track list track list dot length minus one oh this should be dot length dot length minus one right what do i want to do so let me explain what i'm trying to achieve here if autoplay is equal to one in other words if autoplay is set if the user has clicked on autoplay and the user wants the song to loop through each other or to continuously loop so after the first one it goes to the second one if it gets to the last one it loops back to the first one right so if autoplay is equals to one and the track is less than the track list dot length minus one in other words we are not on the last track that's what this simply means what do we want to do well we want to do first of all let's increase the track by one so i'll say index track plus plus that's the first thing right then i'll go i'm gonna load the track and play a song so i'll say i'll call the load track function which will then take the index track uh okay index track okay then i will then play song okay so that's the first um statement then i'll come here and say else if i'll open this up so let me just do like so so in this one now i want to check if we are on the last track right so i'll come here first of all, i want to still check if autoplay is set so I'll, I'll copy this i'll say if autoplay is equals to one in other words the user has set autoplay right what do i want to do i'm um, sorry and then there's a second condition i want to specify so i'll say that if index track is if index track is equal to so i'll say track list dot length track list dot length minus one so what this means is that if we are on the very last track on the playlist okay that's what this actually means if we're on the last track of the of the playlist what do we want to do well we want to go back to the first track so i'm going to come here i'll copy this guy right and i'll say index track is equal to zero okay so by this we are setting the index track back to the first track on the playlist or on the song list or on the track list whichever one you choose to use then we are then going to load the track and play the song on that track so i'll do load track play song okay and then i'll save now if there's no typographical error anywhere what this will do is that when we start playing in fact i think i need to reduce the volume when we start playing a song right and it gets to the end what will happen it's, it's supposed to go to the next song okay i hope there's no problem here so anyway let me just expand this and inspect ctrl shift i okay and i don't have any error there so i'll refresh the page and try it again you know i've not actually set this counter here so let me just play here so i'm just going to wait for it to end okay so for some reason it's not going to the um it's not going to the next track 
okay and i think i i think i'll just i, I think i'll tr i know what is going on so let me let me redo something that i did before okay so here right i will say i'll go upwards and let me just take a look at this thing one more time so if autoplay is equal to one Oh, well, I realized that I did not actually check this play all button. Okay, that's amazing. Okay, so I, you actually need to check this play all button for the loop to work. So I will check the play all button and play song. Let me reduce the volume. And then I would just come to towards the end of the song and watch what happens. So when the song ends, when the song ends, it goes to the next song, okay? So what I'll do is I'll go to the very last song. So this is the last song and I'll go to this end and watch what happens when it ends. It goes to the first song, okay? So it actually works. The only thing is that I did not check this play all button, okay? Um so um yeah. So that's how you actually, you know, um incorporate the autoplay and update the slider at the same time, okay? So um, I believe that's enough for um, one lecture. So what we're going to do is that in the next one, we're going to see how we can update this timer here such that um, when the song is playing, this will be counting, okay? So that's what we're going to do in the next video. All right, thank you so much for watching this one. I'll see you in the next one.